Space, the final frontier. My name is Captain Foley, and these are my adventures. Captain's Log, start date 2015 Hey everybody, Captain Foley is back with you again. And uh, this Captain's Log, I'm going to get straight to the questions and comments, get those out of the way, and then maybe show you a few things that aren't Star Trek related that I'm interested in. Um, so you guys can kind of get a better feel for what the Captain's like and what you guys might want to ask me. Because there's a lot more to me than just Star Trek. So believe it or not, I know there's lots of Star Trek back there. But there's other stuff as well, and there's other stuff throughout the house, which I want to take you on a just quick uh, tour of my interests, let's say. So if you're interested, stay tuned, and we're going to get straight into the questions. The first one is from Power543, so Commander Cockings. Uh, glad you liked the intro. It was a fun one to make, and it was done with the new computer. So I got lots of extra rendering quality from the same amount of time compared to the old PC. So thank you again to all the Indiegogo con uh, contributors for that. Uh, my question to you is, if you had to make a new custom ship from all of your favorite uh, parts of Star Trek ships, what would it be? You can only pick one part from any given ship and you must have the following. A saucer, neck, secondary hull, deflector disc, impulse engine, nacelle struts, nacelles, and if any of our fans want to Photoshop this ship and post it to Trek Yard's Facebook, you could feature it in the next Captain's Log. It's a challenge, everybody. All right, so. That's a tough question, Samuel. Um, it would probably be TOS or um, movie era version uh, era. And I really like the Andor class, as we all know. This is the little Andor class right here. This is the FASA miniature. I don't know if you can see it too well. There we go. It's the FASA miniature. So this design, but with perhaps a longer secondary hull, maybe a modified version of uh, this ship to be like a dreadnought. So perhaps two extra nacelles sticking at the top or the bottom, depending on what looks good. Maybe one extra nacelle, just kind of uh, the strut here and then running along the length of these two here. That would be amazing. And like I said, either TOS or uh, movie era. So you could put the TOS deflector on there. You could change the shape of the secondary hull. Maybe have two pylons coming straight out from here with nacelles on those to make it for nacelle design. That would be incredibly cool. Um, or perhaps even two nacelles coming out of here or out of here or off of the bottom that uh, go this way, of course, and then get rid of these engines and perhaps put another secondary hull here, maybe a hangar bay, uh, something really cool. I don't know or put the hangar bay on the bottom, a fly-through hangar bay like the uh, Dreadnought has. And then um, up here, put a regular secondary hull. And it can be either TOS or movie era. Like, it would be cool to see a, a TOS version of this design. I've seen them before online, but I haven't had a miniature of it. So this is all I've had. And uh, something I'd really be interested in seeing another version of. So I don't know if it really answers your question, Samuel. I really didn't have, I didn't want to, write down all the parts that I would uh, do to assemble a ship, but that's pretty much it, is what I would like to see. Something similar to that, but in a dreadnought design, and uh, a couple different variations would be very neat. So if you guys do indeed want to do that, uh, Photoshop me a ship or whatever, please do so and add it to the Trek Yards page and just uh, tag me in it so that I can check it out and maybe I'll show it on the next Captain's Log. All right, so next question is from Kevin Clarkson. I agree, Captain. Samuel's new intro is awesome. And it is. It sounds excellent, and the Dreadnought is a good ship, and a new, the new computer must be a cracker. It is, from what I hear, it's very impressive, and Samuel's very happy with it. <laughs> uh, interesting idea regarding a TV show. While I would love to see this get bigger and bigger, I'm afraid that if it gets picked up by a local network, either here or in the UK, admittedly extremely unlikely, or in Canada, there is always the risk that the, the dynamic may change with the presenters in two di distant countries. Basically, Ca Trek Yards is Captain Foley and Commander Cockings. True. Uh, we've talked about including another guest uh, host or another regular host, sorry, um, maybe a female, somebody that can kind of tone down the technical aspect of the show, make it more relatable to everybody else. So this has been talked about, and we do we don't want to mess with the dynamic because we do have a good dynamic. So. 
it's something that we're considering we're talking about and we're looking into so there's no promises yet don't get freaked out uh n n nothing's going to change anytime soon but <laughs> it's something to at least think about and we should welcome all your suggestions if you can think of something that would make the show dynamic and awesome please let us know uh, he goes on to say as you wanted more questions i'm happy to oblige chief other than star trek and model making do you have any other hobbies well we're going to get to that in a minute um I'm a sword fighter, or at least I was in my, when I was a little bit younger. Uh, I did medieval sword fighting, fencing, um, and kendo. I do have a sword collection, which I'm actually going to show you in a little bit. I'm also an avid Egyptologist and a huge Sherlock Holmes fan. But yeah, we're going to get into all that a little bit later. Um, and I guess for hobby-wise, model trains too. I don't really have the space here to have a have a layout, but that's something else we're going to discuss in just a few minutes. So thank you for the question. And he has one more question. Will there be an exclusive line of Trek Yard shirts in the future? Yes! We would love to do an exclusive line of Trek Yard shirts. We've got a bunch of um, designs already made. Uh, we're just we're concerned about costs. We have to get them printed and whatnot. And, uh, but yes, stay tuned. There will be, um, Trek Yards merchandise available eventually. We have a few things in the works, a few ideas running around in our heads that we would like to, uh, look into. So stay tuned for that. Next is from Steve Martino. The new intro is really nice. Good job, Sam. Agreed a hundred percent. So let's move on to Darby Fox Conway. Uh, hi, hi from the Ottawa Valley. Great video. I use an iPhone for my videos and they seem to do really well. Looking forward to more videos. Love the intro. The Dread has been my f a fave of mine. Do you guys still play Star Trek Online? And if so, do you have a fleet? Yes, I do occasionally play. I don't really have the time to play uh, as much as I would like to. But uh, I do occasionally play. I do have a fleet. Um called Turbulent Flow. It's not my fleet. I'm actually a member of another fleet, but we should actually. Samuel, we should make a Trek Yards fleet and have all of our fans join the Trek Yards Star Trek Online fleet. I think that's an amazing idea. But yes, we are on there, and uh, I know Samuel has played. I don't know if he still plays, but... Uh, next is Sackwist. How do you know Samuel? What's the history? Have you ever had a Trek dream? And I like the shirt. <laughs> um... Thank you about the shirt. I can't really recall ever having a Star Trek dream, except for Trek Yards, and it has become a reality. No. And the history between me and Samuel, it's pretty much mentioned all the time. Uh, he watched one or two of my movie reviews, because I do Star Trek movie reviews, and uh, he learned a few things that he didn't know, so he made me an intro, and he found out it was my birthday, so he mailed me the intro as for my birthday, and it's my first Captain Foley intro with the TOS Enterprise cruising by and going into warp. So, it's a story we've told a few times. And that's how we met. We started talking on uh, Skype, and we both learned of our love for Star Trek ships, and we decided let's do a show about it, and something that we would ourselves like to watch if we were just fans. And so, that's how Trek Yards was born. So, brief summary there. Hope that helped. Um, and then he, uh, Samuel actually responded to his re uh, reply and said, there's a video for that back in the early days. So yes, please go check out my early videos. Lots of cool stuff. You'll actually see lots, lots of my collection in my older videos because that's how I kind of started this channel, model building and then showing off my Star Trek collection. So then Sackwist re replied again to Samuel and said, you should start your own first officer's log. Perhaps you could look, could talk about your own projects and be, ugh, and per, or perhaps even your thoughts on Star Trek Uncharted. I'm sure uh, the fans would. Ugh, I'm sure the fans would like to scour the realm of the fanverse. That's a great idea, Samuel. You should have a commander's uh, briefing or a commander's log or something um, to, yeah, talk about your projects. Talk about temporal anomaly. Talk about working on Trek Yards. The 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 hiccups you've run into, um, the problems with certain episodes, little anecdotes about us talking to the designers and whatnot, because we have a lot of great stories and I, we have a lot of great bloopers, which maybe one day we'll have a blooper reel for you guys because it'll be funny. Trust me. We're a, a funny bunch of guys when we screw up. Not that we screw up because we're perfect. Uh, okay, so the next one is from Joseph Bryant. Uh, you are not alone. I love the Federation class and the three nacelle galaxy design, and I think your new intro is great. You should come up with a good name for your ship instead of the USS Federation. Well, actually, the one on my intro is the Con Con Confederation, um, but uh, 
You have made it clear that this is your favorite Federation ship from the original series, but if you were to choose your favorite ship from each of the other Star Trek series and some of the top video games, what would they be and why? Oh, that's a tough question. Well, uh, I would love to name this ship USS Trek Yards, but um, it is a mesh that we have, uh, so it's already got the ship, the name on the hull, so the Confederation's fine with me for now. Um, but other ships that I like, hmm. From other series. Well, all the series are kind of same era, almost, because TNG, Voyager, Deep Space Nine, they're all the same era, so I'll just pick one from that era. I would have to say... The Sovereign class is one of my favorites, as well as the Prometheus. Um, and from Enterprise, of course, there's not really much to choose from. But I would have to say the Andorian ships in Enterprise are very cool design. I really like them. Uh, let's go with Star Trek Animated. I know it's TOS, but the, uh, the, f the freighter design in TOS. Um, and actually in the remaster now, they have the freighter in there as well. The uh, unmanned robotic freighters, uh, they are very cool design. Not very, they don't really look uh, star fleety, but I don't think they are. I think they're more civilian. So another great design. I don't know. I just, I love ships. Uh, there's so many to choose from. It's kind of, kind of caught me off guard with that question. I just don't know what to, to pick. I didn't really research these questions before I went into this video. So uh, yeah, too many to choose from. I'll have to compile a list of some of my favorite ships for another uh, captain's log, I think. So stay tuned. All right. Um, next one's from Daniel Collins. There's only two more. Daniel and one more. Greetings from Sydney, Australia. Good day, mate. Go for a swim in the water. Uh, sorry, I apologize. Oh, I lost my, lost my place. So anyway, Daniel Collins. Greetings from Sydney, Australia. Been loving the show and looking forward to much more. When I find some time, I can plan. When I find some time, I can even plan to watch the reviews on the J.J. Abrams Trek movies. They're good. I got a few of them. Um, yeah, two are actual movie reviews. Two are just talking about the problems with the films. So hope you enjoy them. Captain Foley, we all know you're a huge fan of the Federation class dreadnought. What are your thoughts on the Galaxy class version from Q's alternate future and all good things? I like it, but at the same time, it looks a little contrived and a little kit bashy with the extra weapons and the big phaser rifle cannon thing in the bottom of the, uh, the primary hall. It's a little much for me. I do the overall aesthetic looks nice. I think with just adding an extra warp engine and a few little smaller details would have been better than kind of bulking it up the way they did. But it's pretty cool, and I can see them actually doing a refit like that of the Galaxy class. So yeah, I do and I do like it. Not my favorite ship, but that's all I'll say about that right now. Thanks also for the tip for the Facebook group. Beam me up, hottie. Um, I am looking forward to seeing your other collections. I too find I have a few collections outside of Trek and Sci-Fi. Plenty more questions, but I'll space them out. Keep on trekking. Well, thank you for spacing out the questions. Uh, I would love to answer questions for all my captain's logs, so that's awesome. Thank you very much, Daniel, and uh, throw another shrimp on the barbie for me, eh? Don't hit me. Don't hate me. Don't hate me. Don't hate the player. Hate the game. Anyway, one more here, so let's get right into it. Uh, it's from... Scream and scream again. We fear change, Garth. That's how the, it starts with a quote. Wishing you the best on your TV talks. Interesting to think about a Trek Yards catering to the masses. Adding an extra host sounds like it would have added... Yeah, sounds like when they added extra characters to the Lone Gunman TV series. Also, the screen is going to get awfully full of talking heads. Well, we're not going to do a talking heads type show for a TV show. It would be more of a sit-down piece. We would have a few brief conversation. Then we would have video clips and stuff on screen, probably. And we would just talk over it. We wouldn't have the talking heads on TV. It's not really a TV format. That's more of a web series format. So there would be a different look to the show if it ever hit TV. We don't want a bunch of talking heads on the screen. I mean, occasionally we might pop in the corner to point out an interesting fact about the ship or something. I don't know. We would need to really think about it. On a positive note, I was just yesterday thinking the exact thing you mentioned in this log. I definitely think you guys have what it takes to be, to be the next incarnation of Trek for TV. Well, thank you. Your guests, 
The guests you find are phenomenal. I love that you use the old tech manuals and books to research, research for your show. Uh, what would really be great if Netflix or something picks up a new Trek series and broadcasts a new Trek Yards episode along with every new episode for the series, like they do with Talking Dead. That way, your audience is already tuned in and on board. You can talk about the whole episode, plus get into the nitty-gritty of specific ships. Also, the Dreadnought is a beauty. And then he goes on to say, oh yeah, dot, 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 and nothing else. So I don't know if he wanted to continue or if he's going to say something in the next Captain's Log. But yes, I like that idea about playing a Trek Yards episode immediately following an episode of a new show. That's amazing. That's a great idea. And for us, actually, Samuel, to talk about a show, uh, watch a, a specific episode and talk about the whole episode, uh, Trek Yards dissection of the show, so to speak, and then focus uh, primarily on the ships that were involved in the episode, and talk about episode-specific things that they did, uh, things we saw, things like that. That's a great idea. I, I would actually make a much better, probably, t uh, Trek Yards TV show, far less technical and more opinion-based. So, great suggestions. Thank you very much. And that's it for the comments and questions for this, uh, this Captain's Log, guys. Um, thank you again for all of those, and please feel free to submit as many as you like. Um, but right now, we're going to move on to a few other things in my collection so that you guys can kind of see the diversity that is Captain Foley. So bear with me, and uh, we're going to take a look at a few things. All right, talk to you soon. Well, I'll see you in a split second. Okay, so of course we have the Star Trek collection. Uh, there's a lot more to it than just this. I'm just going to give you kind of a brief little look at it right now. Um, there's so much more packed away and in other rooms. I just don't want to... You'll see them all eventually in all my captain's logs. And if, like I said, if you go back and check out older videos, I talk about most of this stuff anyway. So one of my biggest uh, loves in life is Lamborghinis. Um, always love Lamborghinis. Specifically, I would love a Countach, Diablo... Um, Murcielago and an Aventador. I'm not a big fan of the of the Gallardo. It's basically a cheap man's Lamborghini. Yes, I said that. And uh, so yes, and I did drive a Lamborghini Aventador in Vegas uh, around a racetrack. So that was an amazing adventure. One just like that, only green. So one of my loves, Lamborghinis. Now, also huge, huge Transformers fan. There's my Optimus Prime collection. <laughs> um, so yes, big Transformers fan, always have been, and G.I. Joe. My G.I. Joe collection is basically all packed up right now. I was a bigger trans um, G.I. Joe fan as a kid than I was a Transformers fan, but as I grew older, I kind of fell into love for Transformers. So, There's those. Uh, also a huge Star Wars fan. I don't think you can like Star Trek and not like Star Wars. I think that's kind of rude. I did a video quite a while ago saying, why can't we all just get along? I don't understand the hate between the Trekkers and the Trekkies <laughs> and the uh, Star Wars fans. And I actually think JJ will do a good job with Star, uh, Star Wars as he is a huge fan, always has been. He's just never really been a fan of Star Trek, so he not, should not have been given the reins, but that's just my opinion. There's one of my old Star Trek models that I did probably about 20 years ago now. Millennium Falcon. And that's about it for right down here, guys. We are actually going to move upstairs now and check out a few more things. So here we go. Uh, big into history, World War II, etc. Got a few aviation wings here. First World War, uh, Second World War, Air Force and Naval Aviator. F-14, one of my favorite jets, P-51 Mustang is one of my favorite warbirds. My grandfather's Highland Light Infantry um, badge and pins. I apologize, I haven't dusted any of this stuff, guys. So, But, like I said, big into Egyptology. Huge, huge Sherlock Holmes fan. Always have been, way before Sherlock in elementary. They are good, don't get me wrong, love them, but uh, there's no better Sherlock than Jeremy Brett from the Granada TV series of the 80s, sorry. Uh, medieval history, armor, weapons, love all that stuff. 
and then miscellaneous other things. Um, big fan of the Titanic too, even well way before the movie. So don't think I'm a movie buff that way. Just latch onto it because it's popular. That's not like me at all. Look, Samuel, an old old Union Jack. And anyway, this is an old uh, pre. This was pre 1945 map of the world from National Geographic. Um, I tell that because it doesn't have the end of the Second World War on it. My mom had it framed for me years and years and years ago for my birthday. Beautiful wooden frame. They had a little problem uh, with the backing they used, I believe, because it did kind of wrinkle a little bit, but cool nonetheless. And like I said, too, I'm a huge uh, sword collector. I used to have 36 swords until my divorce, when my ex-wife took them all and sold them on me. So I slowly had to rebuild my collection, and it's not quite as big as it used to be. Here's a few that just kind of tucked away in a corner. There's more here, a couple versions of the Highlander sword. Uh, actual samurai sword there, and the Kurgan sword from Highlander. Up here we have the exact replica of the Highlander sword. This one is signed by Christopher Lambert on the blade, as well as etched on the blade. Got some more African weaponry there. Some uh, maces, not maces, um, well, yes, maces, but more like morning stars here. Some sai. And once again, anything medieval weaponry, vampires, big into vampires as well. My wife's into gargoyles. Also a huge, huge fan of the opera fan. So is that. Got a huge DVD and movie collection. And of course more weaponry there. So medieval, I love it. I think ancient weapons or swords. Here's my favorite sword. It's a hand and a half broadsword, Excalibur. Beautiful engravings on the blade. I used to have one that had a gold pommel and hilt, but uh, lost that in the divorce and have never been able to find uh, an exact copy of it. So this is the closest I've got with the silver. Also, my wife, for my uh, 40th uh, birthday last year, didn't know what to get me, so she bought me some land in Glencoe, Scotland, making me a lord. So I'm Lord Captain Stuart Foley. Kind of reminds me of Lord Garth. So, he <laughs> I actually have forms. I can officially have it changed on my license and whatnot to reflect that I'm a lord, but haven't done that yet. Also a huge train fan, steam locomotives. Are kind of my thing and earlier I mentioned uh, model trains here's some of my end scale locomotives some are actually ornaments but most of these are working locomotives and other train collectibles here I have been a train fan for a long long time since I was a young kid my grandfather had a huge HO Leo in his basement there's where I'm from. Well, about 15 minutes outside of Stratford, Ontario. That's where I was, grew up. So back to my trains here. We were uh, talking about those. Huge HO fan, because like I said, I grew up with those with my, in my grandfather's basement. And um, love HO scale, but my favorite scale is N scale. Or Z scale, I would like some Z scale stuff. But as anyone knows that's into model trains, Z scale is really expensive and hard to find, especially Americana steam locomotives and whatnot. There's a lot of European Z scale, so not a big fan of the European train uh, look. So more of the North American steam locomotives, the Hudson's, the Berk Berkshires, engines like that. So. Um, so yes, end scale's my favorite. I've got a bunch of end scale locomotives. I have a small end scale layout downstairs. It's tucked away right now. And uh, so them and HO, my dad collects Lionel trains, the larger ones, the O scale. 
And uh, it's just always been a father-son thing we've done with the trains. So that's another one of my interests. So I'm going to wrap it up for this episode, guys. Um, I probably bored you to death. Who wants to see my house, right? Um, but thank you for tuning in. And I hope you learned a little something. If you have any more questions for me about any of these things, please let me know. But let's try to keep the main focus on Star Trek and Trek Yards because that's what we're all, that's what we all love here. So anyway, guys, I will talk to you very soon. This is Captain Foley signing off until next time. Bye, guys.